Molecular compounds are generally easier to name than ionic compounds. So in this case, it turns out with any two nonmetals, there are usually multiple combinations. Like nitrogen oxygen, there are like six or seven different compounds with different ratios of nitrogen to oxygen atoms. So if we had to worry about oxidation states, this would be a pain in the butt. So they said, forget it, scrap it. We're just going to use a Greek numerical prefix to describe exactly how many of each atom there are. What's the Greek prefix for two? Di. So they say, before you say the first element, tell me how many there are with a Greek prefix. So we say di, and in this case, di nitrogen. Cool. Then you can tell me how many of the second element there are, and then you're going to give me its name, but you're going to still use that IDE ending just like we did with ionic compounds. So instead of oxygen, we'll say oxide. And how do you tell me that there are four of them? Tetra. tetra. And instead of saying tetra oxide, we kind of oftentimes try to avoid a vowel-vowel sound. So we'll drop that first vowel and just say tetroxide. So if you see it tetra oxide, it's probably technically wrong, but you might see it anyways. But tetroxide is proper. So dinitrogen tetroxide. So this is easier, but because now we have two systems, a lot of people would go back here and look at like CuCl2, and what would they name it incorrectly? Uh. Copper dichloride, they might call it. So, and technically, back in the day, they used to call it that. So, but now it's improper, and it would be technically incorrect, but it would still show up as a nice multiple choice answer for that. So don't use the rules for molecular compounds for ionic and vice versa. So they thought this was so easy. The lords of chemistry who set out the rules for nomenclature thought this was just too easy. They're like, you know, if we make this harder, we'll feel smarter because they'll feel dumber. So they decided, let's make this a little more complex. So if we look at CO2, what is the Greek prefix for one? Mono. But they said, you know what? If you only have one of the first element, we leave the mono off. If you include the mono, it's wrong. So instead of saying monocarbon dioxide, we just say carbon dioxide. Cool. So then they decided, let's make this even harder. If you only have one of the first element, no mono. But if you only have one of the second element, you have to include mono. Why? Because. <laughs> so they're just trying to trick you here. So carbon monoxide, again, only one of the first element, no mono. If there's one of the second element, though, you have to include the Greek prefix mono, just to make this trickier and harder and to make themselves feel smarter. <laughs> Any questions on molecular compounds? So what is this guy called? Yeah, what is he called? Sure, but we just call him water. But, but yes, he is dihydrogen monoxide. So, and if you go to dhmo.org in your free time, you might just have some fun. And they give you all sorts of fun facts about how harmful this substance is and how many people die from it every year and try to convince you that it's really harmful and not telling you that it's water the entire time. Good times. We convinced the TA to sign a petition to ban dihydrogen monoxide from the university one time. It was great. <laughs>